What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of the operating room. For a lot of people, the operating room is a very foreign place. It's a place that not everyone gets the opportunity to go to. Fortunately for medical students, you do rotations in med school where you get to rotate and you have to do a surgery rotation to graduate. Some PA school students, some nursing students may get the opportunity, maybe some nurse practitioner students, depending on your rotations. But not everyone gets the opportunity to go into the operating room. And for some people, it can be a very intimidating and scary place. And I know it was for me when I first stepped into the operating room, I was like, wow, this place is crazy. Like, what is going on around here? So I wanted to make this video for those students out there that may have upcoming rotations that are coming up or going on a surgery rotation as a sub-I, which means as a fourth year medical student and you're going on your acting internship rotations where it is extremely important to know the do's and don'ts because I will tell you a story of a med student that crushed and absolutely killed his chances of getting into a program because he did something in the operating room that he should have known. So I'm gonna go over a few tips, suggestions for you guys and uh, hope you enjoy this video. So some do's and don'ts of the operating room. The operating room can be very frightening for a lot of people. Some people are very intimidated and get lightheaded or faint, do things when they see blood. In the operating room, especially on a trauma rotation, where a patient with a gunshot wound and we're going through their belly, you know, we're fixing a broken bone, the, le the leg is hanging off of the side of the bed, there's blood like everywhere. I remember lots of cases in residency where I left the operating room and had blood all over both of my legs, all over my face mask. Uh, yeah, so it can be a very dirty place sometimes. But a few things for you guys. Number one, you have to, depending on the hospital, you have to wear certain scrub sets or certain uniforms. So check with your hospital and see, hey, what is the colored scrubs that I should wear? There are certain professions where certain colors at different hospitals. At my hospital and residency in San Antonio, the doctors wore one color, the nurses wore one color, the technicians wore another color, so you can tell who's who. Another thing is you have to make sure that your hair is able to fit in one of these surgical caps. So if you have long braids or really big, poofy, puffy hair, you may want to do something with your hair so they can fit into one of the surgical uh, caps. The next thing is just know that everything that is blue in the operating room is sterile. Do not touch anything that's blue. Do not bump into it. Do not try to, you know, grab something off of it. Do not try to cross over it. Don't do that. The technicians, surgical technicians are very particular about their operating room and sterility. They will call you out. They will, they, it's almost, uh, it's almost kind of frightening. They will yell at you if you touch any of their stuff. Do not touch anything blue because if you touch something blue, everything's sterile, we have to get new instruments, new trays. We can't use that in the, in the case. So it just eliminates or also it makes us late for a case. If we don't have that instrument, no other particular instruments for that particular surgery in the room at that time, we can't do the surgery. We gotta tell the patient to cancel the surgery, the anesthesiologist, you gotta explain to the patient why this happened. The CEO of the hospital may get involved, so it's a big deal, it costs a lot of money. Do not touch anything blue. The second thing is when you're gowning, we wear surgical gowns in the operating room Make sure that the, your senior person gowns first. So if I'm walking into the operating room 
with my staff, I always let him go first. It's a sign of courtesy, sign of respect. Like, hey, you go first, you're the senior, you're the chief operating doc surgeon, you go first. The same thing when scrubbing your hands. When you scrub your hands, make sure your hands are always like this. So I walk around the operating room like this. Never put my hands below my waist because that's not a sterile area. And never touch anything after you scrub your hands. When you're scrubbing your hands with the surgeon or with your resident or with your surgical tech, always, always, always scrub the same amount of time as that other person. So the surgeon that I was operating with today, he's a spine surgeon. He was scrubbing for a good amount of time and I kept scrubbing. We were talking about sports and other things while we were scrubbing. It's just another sign of respect. You don't wanna scrub for two minutes and your surgeon who's operating, who's that this is his surgery and he scrubs for seven minutes. Just scrub, same amount of time as that particular surgeon. So we're about to do a knee replacement uh, before surgery. Usually go through the steps of the surgery in my head. Um, just thinking about what things can go wrong with the um, with the steps of the surgery. And then uh, just kind of thinking out the steps in my head. It's a lot of steps in surgery for each particular procedure. And um, you, everything has to be and to sync, everybody has to work together as a team to complete the surgery. So another thing is if you have nice shoes and you don't want them to get dirty, do not wear them. There's also some boot covers that can go over the shoes, but any shoes that you do not want to get dirty, blood, body fluids, everything else, do not wear them in the operating room. Certain places have certain restrictions on what shoes you can wear. I was in Thailand and the hospital and the people in the hospitals, they wore clogs with no socks. Yes, I said that correctly. Everyone in the hospital wore clogs with no socks. And I don't know the real reasoning behind this, but I had to try it as well. It was freaking weird. You get blood splatter on your feet, I guess, and you just wipe it off. So depending on your hospital policy protocols just check with your local hospital and see what is the norm for that area the next thing that I want to pass along is that everyone is a little nervous and everyone is a little frightened when you go into the operating room or seeing blood for the first time but it does get better with time I was used to it because I was in the military went to Iraq as a medic and saw a lot of bad injuries. So blood, body fluids really doesn't phase me at this point. But for a lot of people, when you first see that, you, you may get wheezy, you may get lightheaded or dizzy, nauseated. That's normal. That happens to a lot of people. And then you get used to it as time goes on. Also, when you're in an operating room as a new person, don't just go stand in the corner. Go around, introduce yourself, say, hey, nice to meet you. My name is such and such. I'm a rotating student, or I'm a medical student, or I'm a surgery tech, or I'm a respiratory therapist just watching. Because people know who's not supposed to be in the operating room. It can be a infection control problem when there's a lot of people in the operating room coming in and out increases the rate of infection so just introduce yourself let everyone know in the room that you're there for what whatever particular reason you don't want to just go stand in the corner and then the surgeon yelling out in the middle of the surgery hey who are you over there in the corner so just introduce yourself to everyone be polite if the surgery is going to be involving x-rays or radiologies, make sure you have some lead. It's a lead vest. There's a thyroid shield as well to protect you from the x-rays. And if you're going to be close to the operating room table, just make sure sorry, that you wear a mask. So the mask with a face shield because you don't want to be standing off in the corner and you think you're far back enough and you get hit with a bone chip of uh, a piece of bone and goes into your face or your eye or something. That happens, and especially in orthopedics where we're using a saw, we're using a drill, hammer, 
things fly all across the room. So make sure you wear a face mask over your face. But those are my big do's and don'ts of the operating room. The one story that I do have for you is a fourth year medical student who rotated at our, I wanna say what program, he rotated at a program and in the operating room, once he put on his sterile gown, he had his sterile gloves on, and then someone has to tie your back of your gown. You have that person who ties the back of your gown doesn't have to be sterile. This fourth year medical student who should have known this, who was trying to get into orthopedics with his sterile gloves, tried to tie another resident's back. That's a big no-no. You should know that as a third year medical student on the first day of your rotation. That destroyed his chance of getting into that particular program. You do not want to make mistakes like that. Ask questions, but make sure that you ask them at the appropriate time. If the case is going south, patient's losing a lot of blood or, or is unstable, just stand back and hold your question because the surgeon is not going to answer a question when things are going bad. He can't control bleeding or there's a complication. So just be mindful of how well the patient's doing or how well the surgery's doing. So surgery can be very intimidating for a lot of people. Some surgeons can be very abrasive. So just know that you gotta have tough skin sometimes, but for the majority of other surgeons, they're, we are very, very nice and we love to teach and have people in the operating room with us. So I hope this video helps, um, and if you have never seen blood before, don't worry. It, it may take some time for you to get used to it, but as time goes on, you'll do better. And I hope you enjoy your time in the operating room. It's my favorite place to be. I have other videos about choosing a specialty and whether you should, whether you want to be in the operating room versus whether you want to be in the hospital, like rounding inpatients or in clinic. And my office, my sanctuary is in the operating room. That's where I love to be. I'm at peace when I'm there. So hope this video helps. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.